Hello everybody, this is Mr. Rob and welcome back to another episode of the Oakland Athletics franchise here on MLB The Show 24 where today the Oakland A's return home to the Oakland Coliseum and we'll start this episode against the 25 and 36 Seattle Mariners before facing another squad at home in the second episode in the Toronto Blue Jays second half of the episode. If you're excited for this one, make sure you drop a like and you subscribe down below, especially if you want more franchise content. On the mound for the A's today is Alex Wood who's been easily their best pitcher of the season, and since we're so bad, does that mean he could potentially be a trade candidate? Josh Rojas with 11-game hit streak will begin the day for Seattle, and he'll begin the day beginning plunked. That ball hits him in the square of the back, so he'll take first pace for J.P. Crawford, who lines right at Seth Brown for the first out of the ball game. We'll take a look at the Mariners squad. We saw them back in May at Seattle, where we won a three-game set against them. They've Done better than us since then, though. As here's a look at the roster. We'll see J-Rod up next, followed by Mitch Garver, Ty France, Mitch Hanniger, Samad Taylor, Cade Marlau, and the designated hitter, Dylan Moore. Next up is Julio Rodriguez with a full count pitch. Grounds this one over to Toro at third, trying to go around the horn, and we do. That is a 5-4-3 ending-ending double play. On the mound for the Mariners will be George Kirby. Having himself a nice season, 270 ERA through his 12 starts. Just needs a little bit more run support in his games. Zach Geloff will lead off for Oakland, now batting 253 on the season. He'll get a curveball up in the zone, and this will help out as he gets a leadoff single to begin the frame. It brings up Seth Brown up next, and he looks at strike three. Fastball on the inside part of the plate. Gets him looking. Next up, Ryan Noda. He also strikes out. Noda actually leads baseball in strikeouts, which is not a good stat to lead. How about Brent Rooker? He's not going to strike out, but he's just going to ground this one over to first where France will get it himself, so both teams scoreless through one. We'll go bottom three now. Abraham Torr at the dish for Oakland, batting 173 on the season. He'll draw a walk, though, to take first base. That'll bring up a Lesmus Diaz playing shortstop today, and he perfectly times one to left center field and back at the track, but it's caught. Just enough space for Rodriguez out there to make the grab a loud out number one. Back to the top of the lineup, Geloff with a single into right, just like he did in the first at bat. He takes a curveball and hits it into right field, and runners will actually make it to the corners. Toro is safe, so with one away, a good chance to do some damage here. It's Seth Brown up next. First pitch, swing and grounder over to third. Taylor's got it. A great defensive play gets the double play, and we're still scoreless through three. What a play by Samad Taylor. How about top four? Josh Rojas at the dish. He got hit in his first at bat, and he singles here. So his hit streak now up to 12 games. J.P. Crawford now 1-2. Shot over to first. Nice diving stop by Noda. Keeps in the infield, so we'll get one out at first. A great play there. Out of the middle, J-Rod gets it through, and that's going to be a single, and it's going to drive home the first run of the ball game. The two-time Silver Slugger and All-Star strikes first for the Mariners. 1-0. He's on first base with a lot of speed, but Mitch Garver is going to ground this one over to Toro and another around the horn at double play. Staying with the Mariners here, top five. Ty France laces one. This one's going to get off of the wall and left. That's going to be a leadoff double for the Mariners' first baseman. Now Mitch Hanniger up next back in Seattle after a one-year stint in San Francisco. One-two pitch right side of the infield. Gell off with a nice stop gets the play. A nice play defensively to get the first out and potentially save the run for the time being. Unfortunately, though, Samad Taylor up next will ground out to a Diaz, and that will score the run. So Mariners now lead 2 to nothing. Cade Marlow up next. 0-1 pitch to him, and he flies this one to left field, and that will end the fifth for the Mariners extend their lead. We'll go bottom five now. Jordan Diaz getting the start today at third, and he will strike out swinging on the 6K of the day for Kirby. I'll bring up Lawrence Butler starting in center field in today's contest. He gets an 0-1 fastball, gets jammed, and hits this one to center, and it's actually going to get down. So a nice base hit there by Butler puts him on. Now Abraham Toro up next. He's going to check his swing. It's actually going to get away, and it's going to allow Butler to take second. Nice play on your heels to get to a scoring position. Later, the bat full count pitch. Toro would draw a walk, so at the end of the day, the pitch doesn't matter anyway. We have two on, one outs for Edmonds Diaz. Had a loud fly out back in the third, only hitting 144 on the season. 1-2 pitch, he swings through a fastball high. So now we need a base hit for sure to try to drive the run in. It's Zach Geloff. He has two of those today. Two singles into right field. 
Oh, one pitch. Another hit into right field, and another one that's going to get down. And this is going to be more than a single. Get off rounds first goes to second. Runner's going to be waved home. It's going to be a close play at the plate. And the runner is saved. Toro ahead of the throw. A game time. Two RBI double for Zach Gilloff here in the fifth. Seth Brown up next. Gets a nice fastball to hit, but he gets underneath it. But the A's do a good job of rallying back and tie it up at two apiece. We'll stay with them bottom six now. Ryan Noda at the dish. First pitch swing on a curveball, but a beautiful play at short by Crawford gets him. Glove has been flashed today on both sides of the diamond. Next up, Brent Rooker. This one's for sure going to get down, so a one-out base hit for our right fielder. That brings up Shea Langlier's 3-2 pitch, and he's going to check his swing to say he didn't go around. And now two on for Kirby, and it's going to bring up Jordan Diaz. The DH today is striking out twice. Only hitting 115 on the season. It's been a poor start for him. 0-2 pitch, and he gets plunked. Hey, we'll take it. He draws a base, which means the bases are loaded now for Lawrence Butler. First pitch up the middle. A diving stop gets one, but he beats the throw, and that means a run's going to score. The Athletics have the lead 3-2, to two, and that's going to do it for Kirby. He's going to be pulled in favor of Emerson Hancock for his fifth appearance of the year. Three appearances last year. For the Mariners as well. 0-2 pitch to Toro. He swings through. So Hancock gets the job done. But Oakland has taken a lead. They're going to turn it over in the 8th inning to Zach Jackson. Alex Wood gave us 7 great innings of pitching. Now it's up to Jackson in the bullpen. First batter Mitch Hanniger singles into left. Not the start Jackson has wanted. It's been a very poor year for him. And now he's allowed a base runner. Dominique Canzone is going to come off the bench for the Mariners. To get some more speed for Mitch Hanniger. Taylor up next, though. It's not going to matter. Grounds to get off. Flip to second. Flip to first. A 4-6-3 double play. Gets both runners. So now the base is empty for Cade Marlow. 0-2 on the day. 0-2 pitch. And he hits this one into right center. And Jackson gets it done. He goes 1-2-3 unconventionally here in the eighth. So we're going to go to the ninth, which means Lucas Urseg is going to come out of the pen. He's looking for the save. The first batter he faces is Dylan Moore. He pops up into our luscious foul territory where Toro has enough space for the grab. you got to love having all that foul territory. Next batter, Josh Rojas, ground over to Gilloff. He throws him out at first, which means the game's going to come down to J.P. Crawford. He's hitless on the day. 0 for 3. Needs it here or a base to keep the game alive. 1-0 pitch to the shortstop. He hits this one in the right field, and this one's going to get down in fair territory. Crawford keeps the game alive. He gets into second base with a double, which means the tying run is only 180 feet away. They're turning it over to Julio Rodriguez. First pitch, sharp liner over to Noda, who snags it and steps on first base to end it. The Oakland Athletics come back and win this game by a final score of 3-2. to two. Great poise by the team today. They went down 2 nothing early. And it could have been all over from there. But the team rallied back. Geloff had a great multi-hit day, including driving in two runs. And then we get the single or the RBI fielder's choice by Lawrence Butler for the third run. Urseg shuts it down. He gets his double-digit tenth save of the year. And Alex Wood gave us seven great innings of three-hit ball. So a good all-overall performance here for the A's. Unfortunately, going to game two, it doesn't continue. We lose 7-1, to one, so kind of back to normal. J.P. Sears, four innings pitched, five earned runs. Not a good day as we continue just to struggle giving up runs early. Unfortunately, though, in game three, it's the opposite. We lose 12-3 thanks to nine runs in the final two innings of work. Got four earned runs in two innings. Spence, five earned runs in an inning and a third. Not ideal for the bullpen. That's going to bring us into the second half of the episode. We're going to play the Toronto Blue Jays at home. And this is an interesting one because we're going to take a look at Joe Boyle. He got called up in the past couple of weeks and have yet to see a start from him as we look to fix this rotation. So we're going to see if the righty rookie is going to answer the call and potentially step in as our fifth man. And here is Joe Boyle on the mound for the A's. A fifth round pick back in 2020 by the Cincinnati Reds acquired last year at the deadline for Sam Mole. He had a couple of good starts for us last year, so he's been called up to get the chance to be the fifth guy this year. Mace begins his day by striking out Isaiah kiner Falefa. That brings up Santiago Espinal next, and he will also strike out. That was definitely strike three, buddy. That brings up Vladimir Guerrero Jr. He strikes out as well, so a good start for Boyle as he strikes out the side. 
On the mound for the Blue Jays will be Alec Manoa, the righty, with a 4.22 ERA through his first 12 starts of the season. As he tries to keep Toronto in the ALEs hunt. Geloff will lead off for the A's, now riding a nine-game hit streak. He begins his day with a 1-1 slider into right field, but this one's going to be caught for the first out. And we'll take a look at the Oakland Athletics lineup today. This is the standard lineup, as it'll be Geloff, followed by Seth Brown in the two-hole now, Ryan Noda the three, Britt Rooker's the four, Shea Langlier's the five, Estrue Ruiz is now down to six, followed by Daryl Hernandez. A lot of guys underneath 200 are hoping he can step up, and then Toro and Allen. So Brown will then strike out on a high fastball for the second out of the inning. And that brings up Noda still leading the AL in strikeouts. And he'll add one more. Top two now, second inning for Joe Boyles. He'll get Danny Jansen to begin by grounding out to shortstop. That brings up Justin Turner up next, the former Dodger who draws a walk. First base runner of the day for the Blue Jays. Brings up now George Springer up next. And he launches a fastball to straightaway center field. And it's out of here. George Springer goes deep. He takes a 100-mile-an-hour fastball over the straightaway center field wall that got out of here at 101 miles per hour. And George Springer gives the Blue Jays a 2 to nothing lead. Going to the top of the third now where Isaiah kind of fell up his back of the plate. He draws a leadoff walk. That will then bring up Espinal, who we saw strike out just moments ago. Full count pitch to him, and he's going to ground this one over to third as there was a wild pitch that sent the runner to second, and then a wild throw that should have been a routine play and said Toro airmails it, and what should have been an easy out turns into an RBI. 3 nothing now for the Blue Jays. Not really an RBI, but an E5. Runner is now all the way at third base, and here comes Vlad Guerrero Jr., the actual cover athlete. I realized I made a mistake last episode and called Acuna Jr. the cover athlete, but it's actually Vladimir Guerrero, and he will sacrifice fly. So the Blue Jays now up 4 to nothing after the blunder at third base. Next batter is Danny Jansen, and why stop there? He launches one to right field and out of here, and the Blue Jays get another one here in the third inning. Boyle's day is quickly unraveling as Jansen goes yard for the sixth time this season, and the Blue Jays have blown this game wide open 5 to nothing. And we're still in the third inning. As after this, I'm actually going to get a weather delay. If you notice, it was raining. So it'll be an hour delay. And I think this is a good time to switch pitchers. Hogan Harris comes to the game. He inherits a runner at second in the third. And while the scoring is not done, we might have been delayed. But the Toronto Blue Jays offense is not. An RBI single for Springer makes it now 6 to nothing, And then he'll go take second base off of a lazily attempt by Shea Langley. He's got to get more effort than that. David Schneider up next, 0-1 pitch to him. He hits this one into center field, and it will be caught for the second out of the inning. It's been a while since we've gotten it out, over an hour, actually. Dalton Varsho up next. He's going to hit this one to left field. It's going to get down. Why not add more to the total? The Blue Jays now lead 7-0. It was quickly turned into a route here in Oakland. Kevin Biggio up next, right back to Harris. He finally gets out of the third inning. Go top five now, still with Toronto's offense, because why not? They're still hitting on all cylinders, as that is a laser into left field by Justin Turner. Next batter of George Springer saw him go deep earlier. He grounds over to Toro. This should end the inning, but no, it will not. Toro with his second air of the day. That should have been a 5-4-3 double play. Instead, he sends it into right field. A day to forget for Toro is now, instead of the inning being over, his runners on the corners, one away for Davis Schneider. He hits this one into deep left field. Brown will be underneath it, but runner will tag. Plays going to be close at the plate, but it will not be in time. And the Blue Jays add another 8 to nothing now. Don Barsha up next. He's going to ground this one over to Gilloff, and he'll go to second, and we'll get out of the fifth. But the Blue Jays now lead by eight runs. We'll go with the Oakland offense to see if they have any sort of life in this game, as Shea Langoliers will start off the inning by flying out to center. Next up, Estuary Ruiz. He's going to try to bunt his way on board. As I said, this will be a little too hard to Vladdy, and he will step on the bag. Hernia is up next. 2-0 pitch. Circle change, but right over to second base, and the A's get nothing in the fifth. We'll go to top six, where Trevor Gott will come into the game. Still our best reliever, but his ERA is up a little bit to 362. He has Kevin Biggio up next, and he will get him to sky this one behind home plate, where Langoliers will make the play. 
Top of the lineup we go. Isaiah Kiner Falefa now up. He's going to hit this one into right center where it will be caught by Brent Rooker. Quick two down. Can we get a 1 2 3 inning? Is Santiago Espinal up next? He assists one to left. And we do. So Gott gets the job done here in the sixth. We'll go bottom six now. Manoa still on the mound as Abraham Toro, after two errors today, will at least get a single into right field. The leadoff man here on in the six. Nick Allen up next. He golfs a fastball into center field. And that will also get down. Toro on his horse is going to get all the way to third. So at least the A is showing a little bit of life on offense. Still nobody down. Top of the lineup. Zach Geloff up at the plate. He's going to sky a fastball into center field. Deep. Almost to the track. It will be caught. But that should be the first run of the day for the Athletics. Off of a sacrifice fly. That will also do it for Manoa. Mitch White will now come in in relief for the Blue Jays. His next batter, Seth Brown, will take a fastball. 1-1 pitch into right center field. And this one's going to get down out there. Runner had to pause because he wasn't sure if that's going to be caught. So he'll stop at third. But that's a double for Seth Brown. Two on now in scoring position for at Brian Noda, who hits it up the middle of base hits. One run's going to score. Second one's going to hold at third. And now it's 8-2. That brings up Brent Rooker, who's been our best hitter all year, but you can see the numbers in June. It's been abysmal. 0.95 to start this month through the first week. He has a chance here to right his wrongs. First pitch to Rooker. Fastball skies it into center. That should get the job done. Back is caught, but the runner will tag, and Allen should score. And it's now 8-3. to three. The A's have a comeback chance here. Shea Langoliers, 1-1 one, one pitch. He perfectly times a slider into left center field on a line, and it's out of here. Shea Langoliers with a two-run shot, and the A's have quickly put up a five spot here in the sixth inning. What was an 8-0 blowout is now only a three-run deficit off of the sixth homer of the season for Shea Langoliers. Mitch White won't even make it through the frame as Yimi Garcia will now come in in relief for Toronto, trying to get the final out of the inning. He has to do it against Ruiz, who will hit this one on the right. And the bottom of the sixth is finally over. We're going to the eighth inning now, where Eric Swanson will come in and relieve for the Blue Jays. Actually, he just needs to get one more out here in the seventh, and he does just that. So now we'll head to the eighth inning, where Zach Jackson will come into the mound for Oakland. 7.20 ERA now in the season. Still trying to get it down underneath seven. First batter he faces is George Springer, and he's going to poke this one to center. So again... Zach Jackson gives off a lead off. Next batter will be Davis Schneider. 1-0 pitch to him. He hits this one to right, but it's right at Rooker. And that'll be the first out of the inning. Ace trying to keep it a three-run deficit. How about Dalton Varsho? Skied inside the infield. Geloff will make this play. And Jackson has two down. Just needs to get one more out. It's Kevin Biggio. But before he can do that, Mason Miller will actually be called in. Not trying to overwork Jackson. 694 ERA for the young Roddy. Still trying to play it safe with him as he apparently plunks Biggio. I thought he went around. Nonetheless, he'll take first base, but it won't really matter as Kyra Falefa will end the eight. Let's go bottom eight now. Chad Green now in the setup role as Toronto actually has to set up for the save now in this game. His ninth appearance or 11th appearance of the season. Seth Brown will be welcome him to the ball game with a shot to right field and out of here. Fastball right down the middle. Seth Brown says thank you very much. And it's now a two-run deficit. Holy Toledo indeed. Tenth home run of the season for Seth Brown. The bat's starting to finally come around for him, and we like to see it. It's now eight to six. How about Ryan Nota? 2-1 pitch. He calls a fastball into right. Can we go back to back? We won't do just that as Nota will one-hop it off the wall. But it is a double for our first baseman, which means our tie run is now at the plate. And it's Brent Rooker. 0 for 2 on the day. 2-2 two -two pitch. And he will miss on the curveball. Nasty pitch by Chad Green to get him fishing. Shea Langliers, he's homered once today. Fastball over to short. Easy play. They will make it. And now it's two down. That brings up Esturi Ruiz. 2-2 two -two pitch to the center fielder. And he will check his swing. And they'll say he did go around. Again, I don't agree with the call, but what's there to do? Top nine, Mason Miller will stay in for this frame as he'll shatter the bat of Espinal. Go here for Espinal brings up Vladdy Guerrero Jr. And this one's going to be roped into the right center gap and one hop off the wall. 
Espinal's got some speed. He'll round third. And a bad throw will allow Vladdy to get to third. That is going to be the third error of the day for Oakland's defense. Not a good night on that side. Here's a quick shot over to Allen. He's playing in, so the runner will not score. Keep the runner on third base. That's the goal. Turner up next. Over to Noda. A great diving play. There's a good defensive play. As now it's quickly two outs for Oakland. They just need to get one more. George Springer, 1-2. Hit over to Gilloff. He makes the play. So at least we strand the runner on third. But it's a three-run deficit for Jordan Romano, who's already got 14 saves on the season. He has to try to get his 15th. Starts off with Hernandez. Fastball up in the zone. Lazily fly it over to Springer. How about Abraham Toro? 1-2 pitch. A nasty slider cuts the back door. Strikes him out, which means the game is all up to Nick Allen. He's 1-2 for two on the day. 1-2 pitch. Low in the zone called strike three. And that'll do it. The Blue Jays win what is an unexpected thriller here late at the Coliseum by a final score of 9-6. I got to give it to the A's for not fully getting out of this one after going down eight to nothing, but it stinks when you're able to score six runs with an offense like this and still not win the ball game. But nonetheless, we dropped the first one here at home. Three errors also doesn't look pretty on the scorecard, and the Blue Jays take game one. Player of the game will go to George Springer, who had the three RBI home run as well on a three for five day for him. But we got a good bit of offense on our side as well. Game two, before we get there, Logan Davis, we get some more bad news, is out for two to three months of the broken forearm, which is unfortunate because I thought his time in the majors was on the near horizon. We might have to wait to 2025 for one of our top prospects to make the call. We get a little bit of good news as we hit the Blue Jays in game two, three to one, but then get back to our old offensive ways with a three hit shutout against the Blue Jays who beat us four to nothing. So we dropped to 22 and 45 on the season. As we get ready to hit the road next episode for a three-game set in San Diego and a four-game set in Minnesota as we try to get through June and on to July, which will have the draft and the All-Star Game and all the fun festivities. But thank you guys so much for watching this one. If you're enjoying the series, make sure you drop a like and you subscribe down below, especially if you want more franchise content. This is Mr. Rob, and I'll see you in the next one.